Well, Patrick and Joyce police said that the driver was conscious when they arrived. They described him as in stable condition. He is a man in his 70s. Now, the police have left this crossing here tonight, but that train, as you can see here in the darkness, still remains on the crossing. We talked to a witness who described the moments before that crash. The train was right there, feet from the road, and there were no brake lights and no no visible slowing and it just kept right on going through and that's when I saw the impact you see this big puff of dust as the train hit the side of the car and, and we want to show you here the view also from above in news chopper 12 that crash happened just before five o'clock here today and that mangled car here as you see is all that was left police say the driver was headed south on Pleasant View when a train hit it traveling west witnesses told police they heard the train blow its horn several times before crossing I just hope everything turns out OK for the person who was in the car. And I hope the engineers don't feel too bad about what happened because there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing I don't think they could have done. All right, that man's still in the hospital. Ben, are there any warning signs at this particular crossing? Joyce, there are some warning signs. There's a railroad crossing sign and a yield sign here as well. But the neighbors that we spoke to here in the area say that they wish there was more, especially now, possibly some gates or even some lights. Joyce. All right, Ben Wagner reporting live in Plymouth. Packers quarterback and minority owner of the Bucks, Aaron Rodgers, gave some analysis today on the Bucks' upcoming matchup versus the Celtics. I like our chances. We got a great vibe going this year. We have a, a we're a deep, deep team. Uh, Miritich, who didn't play the last 11 games of the season, you know, had an impact on multiple games already. Hopefully, we get Malcolm Brogdon back and uh, and maybe Powell as well. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a fun run. The playoff schedule between the Bucks and the Celtics is still unknown. However, the Bucks believe Game One will be either Saturday or Sunday. Only on 12, a swim instructor charged with sexual assault. The alleged victim, just four years old. 12 News' Derek Rose spoke to the woman charged in the case. And Derek, she's calling the allegations a lie. Yes, yeah, she called me by phone, Joyce. She says they're a complete lie, saying she was falsely accused, and she's fighting this in court. But we learned this is not the first time this particular swim instructor has faced these kinds of allegations. It was a Wednesday afternoon in November when a four-year-old girl claimed her swim instructor tickled her private zone underwater at the Elite Sports Center in Glendale. She told her mother and police Bree didn't want people to know about the touching. Bree is referring to Breanne Taylor, now charged with first-degree sexual assault. No one answered at her apartment, but Taylor called me back about 10 minutes later. I've been accused of something, falsely accused of something, and it's just gone down the deep end. So, or you know, it's not going down the deep end anymore um, because I'm fighting it. During the investigation, police uncovered a similar accusation against Taylor from 2014 when she worked at a YMCA in Madison. An 11-year-old girl told police Taylor put her hand inside the 11-year-old swimsuit to touch her butt. Taylor told me police got that wrong too, but again did not elaborate. They misreported that, um, which is... Yeah, I learned from this experience that you can't trust anybody that you don't know. What it means is nobody cares about the truth. Everybody just cares about drama. Well, Derek, was there a background check before Taylor started working in Glendale? That's one of the questions we're still uh, trying to answer, Joyce, to figure out that timeline. There was a manager was out of the office uh, in Glendale by the time we got there today. But according to the criminal complaint, police say Taylor has lost jobs because of, quote, boundary issues and say she lied about being fired or disciplined for inappropriate touching. Derek Rose reporting live from the newsroom. New at 10, a Milwaukee man says he was severely beaten while handcuffed by police and security at Waukesha Memorial Hospital. A mounted camera, similar to one that we have here in our studio, captured it. Here's the video provided by that man, 38-year-old Jason Kellner. He says the incident took place on St. Patrick's Day two years ago. One officer walked in, kneed him in the chest, and then repeatedly punched him in the head. This happened while his one hand was handcuffed to a bar. Kellner explained to us what happened that night after he was first arrested for OWI. 
use the bathroom on myself in the cop car, use the bathroom on myself in the hospital room. I got agitated and had to use the bathroom one more time. I told the cop, why are you treat me like an animal? I have a torn AC joint and I had a concussion. And my wrist was all cut up from the handcuffs. Kellner says he's looking for an attorney to file a lawsuit against police. Prosecutors charged Kellner with his fourth OWI and resisting or obstructing an officer for the incident. We reached out to both Muskego and Waukesha police for comment. Muskego did not reply, and Waukesha said they would get back to us later. Only on 12, a 10-year-old girl is hurt after a janitor's gun went off at her school. 12 News' Caroline Reinwald is live at St. Josephat's Parish School, where it happened. And Caroline, you spoke with the girl's mother today? Yeah, Joyce, I did, and she tells me that her daughter was not hit by that bullet. It was actually debris that flew out of the wall when that gun accidentally went off. And she tells me she didn't know a gun was even involved until 12 days after her daughter was hurt. The mother of the 10 year old girl wants to protect her daughter's identity. The girl attends St. Joseph's Parish School near 8th and Lincoln in Milwaukee. The woman's niece translated as she explained what happened to her daughter on April 5th. Have you seen the one? It was um, a nail that had come out from like the air conditioning that was in like on right and that's what came flying out and hit her. Turns out the nail that hit the girl only flew out of the air conditioning unit because a janitor's gun he'd secretly brought into the school accidentally went off. The bullet pierced at least one wall, causing the debris to fly out and bruise the 10 year old. The girl's mother told me the school initially never mentioned the gun until April 17th, 12 days later, which police confirmed when they asked her to come in and speak to detectives. When she first found out, she was a little scared. Um, then she got really angry because she realized that they take their kids to the school thinking they're going to be safe. And then she finds out this happens and it was just so much overwhelming for her. We tried to reach out to the janitor, but he wasn't home. Officials with St. Josephus say he's been fired, but neither the parish nor the archdiocese can explain why it took more than a week to call police. I grew up in that school ever since I was, we all grew up in that school. Everybody who lives in, in our house, we all grew up in that school. So for me to see that it was, it was just crazy. Why was there such a delay in calling police? Yeah, Joyce, I did try asking the parish and the Archdiocese of Milwaukee that question. I did not get an answer, and we are not naming that janitor in our story tonight because he has not been charged. Caroline Reinwald reporting live in Milwaukee. Introducing Wisconsin's newest multi-millionaire, the man who bought a Powerball ticket worth $768 million, came forward today. It was amazing. My heart started racing, blood pumping. It, my blood felt warm. I screamed for about five or ten minutes. That's 24-year-old Manuel Franco from West Dallas recalling the moment he realized he hit the jackpot. Franco spent $10 on tickets at a New Berlin Speedway store on March 27th. So now what? We all dream about what we'll do if we'll win. What were your dreams before you won? I just really wanted to travel the world and, you know, stuff like that. I'm not a big guy that's going to go buy fancy stuff. Like, well, of course, I, I might go buy fancy stuff, but nothing like <laughs> <laughs> nothing too big. Franco opted to take the lump sum option worth $477 million all at once. That's $326 million after taxes. It's the third largest lottery prize in U.S. history. He says he quit his job two days after discovering he won. And he'll have more on Good Morning America tomorrow right after 12 News this morning. All from a quick pick, and he didn't say what his job was. He kept some mystery he Kept it there. secret. But in Wisconsin, winners are required to claim their prize publicly within 180 days of the drawing. But some state lawmakers want to change that. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss and oh, State Representative that? Gary Tauken introduced legislation today that would allow winners to stay anonymous. It's called the Lottery Privacy Act. The bill would prohibit anyone from disclosing the winner's personal information if they choose to stay anonymous. I think privacy is something that people would uh, appreciate, especially for the first year while they're trying to figure all this out. Eight states right now allow lottery winners to stay anonymous. Lottery officials have not responded to requests for a comment on the bill.
Lakefront fireworks mystery. Former Governor Scott Walker tweeted this video of fireworks going off at the lakefront in Milwaukee tonight. We're trying to find out exactly what they're for, so stay tuned on that. It was a beautiful night for fireworks. And Mark, a repeat performance in the works tomorrow? Yeah, we've really been on a nice streak so far. And uh, let's keep this going. We've got another mystery figure to talk about, and you can actually see it right now. But can we remove the banner, please, just for me? Just real quick. Quick. Let's show you what's going on. This shadowy figure here. Do you see what's happening? That's actually either a large hawk or a falcon that's sitting on top of our camera. I just think it's kind of cool. I've been watching him for a couple of minutes here. He's just taking a look at our beautiful skyline. 42 degrees right now. It has cooled off quickly. It is a chilly start. Temperatures around 40 degrees, but tons of sunshine. And we will rapidly warm up to near 60 already by noontime. How long this great weather lasts? Coming up in Weather Watch 12. To come in 2020 coverage now, another day and another presidential hopeful in Wisconsin. Cory Booker held an event in Milwaukee this afternoon. The U.S. Senator from New Jersey hosted a roundtable discussion on gun violence prevention. Afterward, the Democratic presidential candidate told 12 News why he'll be back. Why is Wisconsin an early part of your roadmap? Look, I've been coming to Milwaukee for uh, years and years and years. This is an important community uh, to me, period. Uh, and then as someone running for president, it's an essential community. Uh, this is a state that I will be showing up in a lot, trying to earn the support of the voters here. Um, I believe that there's no pathway to the nomination without going through uh, this great state. Booker is among a long list of Democrats running for the nomination. Former Vice President Joe Biden is expected to officially enter the race on Thursday. Remembering Milwaukee restaurant icon Joe Bartolotta. The legacy he left behind and going back in the archives to hear from him in his own words. Plus, a girl appears to be followed home by a stranger. The move she made to get away. And no more chalking tires. Why a federal court ruled the parking checker practice unconstitutional. A case of stranger danger caught on camera in California. A girl walking home alone last week noticed a man in a car following her. At first, she started to walk faster, but then he pulled in front and stopped in the middle of the street. That's when she hid behind a parked truck. You see right there, the man drove away, but came back and tried to talk to her again. The girl stayed behind the truck until she saw the man drive away. Police are looking for him. 
Milwaukee has lost one of its ambassadors. Restaurant owner Joe Bartolotta died in his sleep. He was 60 years old. Joe Bartolotta opened his first restaurant in Wauwatosa in 1993. His group now operates 10 in the area. But he did so much more, a philanthropist and a civic leader whose passion for the city helped convince Democratic Party leaders to hold next year's national convention here. He made the pitch on behalf of the restaurant industry to those people who are making the decision and did just a phenomenal job in selling our city and, and, and he meant it. Very excited about the, the possibility of hosting them so I know that was something he was looking forward to. Uh, it's just such a, a profound loss for us. Bartolotta told me years ago that the success of his restaurants depended on a true connection with the customer. If you build loyalty here though, uh, people are very loyal. In this interview from 2007, he told me he built the restaurant group with his family, a testament to a Sicilian proverb his father taught him about family being like a fist. The fingers on a hand by themselves can be very weak and broken, but if you put that hand into a fist and clench it, it becomes very, very strong and powerful. So he always said, make sure the family is like a fist. Joe Bartolotta is survived by his wife and brother who have asked for privacy at this time. Funeral arrangements are pending. A partial victory against parking tickets tonight. A federal court in Michigan ruled it is unconstitutional to mark tires with chalk to track how long the vehicle is parked. The panel of judges classified that action as an unreasonable search and in violation of the Fourth Amendment. The decision sets a new standard for Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky and Tennessee, the states covered by the Sixth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. You'll soon be able to bring those Amazon returns to any Kohl's store. Right now, it's available at only 100 locations in the country, but the online retailer is expanding the service to each of its 1,150 U.S. stores in July. Shoppers can drop off the items without a box or label, and Kohl's will repackage and send it back for free. A Wausau man is a big fan of superhero movies. His passion just landed him in the record books. The amount of time that it takes, I, I've had to take time off of work. Um, I would take long lunch breaks to accommodate watching an entire movie in that particular time frame. And then just time on the weekends where I'm not, uh, I'm not doing other things. Steve Rupel watched the Captain Marvel movie 116 times. He needed pictures and two written witness statements to make it official. He actually passed the current record after 104 viewings. So I'm trying to think if anyone wanted to break this, I really don't want to re-break it because this has been, it's been pretty tough. There's been a, it's, it's a finite amount of time, but um, I don't think I'm going to try this one again. Altogether, it took 14,268 minutes to set the Guinness World Record. I wonder if that includes the credits, too. Do you have to sit through the credits? <laughs> I wouldn't think so, but I bet he knows some of the lines by mm -hmm. now. Well, not record setting, but our weather has been pretty spectacular lately. Yeah, nice stretch that we've mm -hmm. had so far in 2019. Four days in a row where we see a lot of sunshine. It started on Saturday. We're going back first, and then we'll move forward. It's 60 on Saturday, 74 on Sunday. Yesterday, we hit 76 degrees. That is the warmest temperature that we've had so far this year. Today in Milwaukee, officially 58 degrees. If you were inland at all, say, Brookfield westward, it was warmer. Speaking of Brookfield, now Michelle Green has already opened up the pool. Anybody else here in southeastern Wisconsin? I like this. This is like tackling the world. All right, it's going to be great. Here comes the season. Let's open the pool. Now, if it snows on Saturday, you know whose fault it is. That's right. And it is potential that we could get some snow mixing in. Cooler near the lake. It happened today. It's going to happen tomorrow. Just get used to this. This is this time of year where we're dealing with this. The lake breeze will develop for tomorrow and temperatures will fall uh, as the afternoon carries on, especially within about 10 to 15 miles of Lake Michigan. But that's the negative. The positive is how beautiful it's going to be tomorrow. If you live within about four to five miles of the lake, your warmest temperature is going to be by about 11 o'clock in the morning. Then the lake breeze will kick in. Your temperatures will fall. So I'd recommend trying to enjoy that time first before it gets cooler. If you're inland a bunch, it is going to be much, much warmer throughout the day. The pick days of the forecast Wednesday and Friday. 
That's when it'll be dry. Showers on Thursday, not a big deal, just a few showers here and there. A rainy Saturday on the way. Overall, the weekend is not shaping up nicely at all. So sunglasses tomorrow, umbrella on Thursday, sunglasses Friday, umbrella on Saturday. And this weekend, temperatures are going to be rather chilly. All right, tree pollen is still not good, but it's not as bad as it was because the rain we had from last night early this morning. Mold spores still at a medium level. Big differences in temperature 50 in Burlington, 39 in Waukesha. The cooler air will continue to move in, and as the night goes on, like everybody goes down to around 40 degrees. High pressure keeps this north, keeps this south, and so we stay dry and sunny throughout the day tomorrow. It is a beauty of a day. Enjoy it. Yes, the lake breeze will develop. Uh, but it still is going to be a nice day. Now on Thursday, some scattered showers rolling through here and additional cloud cover. This is going to be very hit and miss. Should not be a big deal. Temperatures fairly mild. Again, cooler near the lake on Wednesday. Uh, a couple of showers here and there on Thursday. Not a bad day on Friday. And then we get to the weekend. Rain likely as we head into Saturday. And it's not going to be a shock if we head into Saturday night and we get some snowflakes mixing in there as well. That's something to be excited about. Mainly cloudy on Sunday, 50. More rain in the forecast for Monday and mostly cloudy skies on Tuesday. We'll keep a close eye on the weekend. In the meantime, let's just enjoy another beautiful day tomorrow. Who says it's not going to be a shock <laughs> if we have snow this weekend? I won't be shocked. It'll be a shock. Saddened. All right. I'm, yeah, it'll be a shock. Right. All right. Well, here in Wisconsin, we are known for many things. Yeah, beer, cheese, and our love of the Packers all come to mind. But now we can add one more claim to fame. What one study says Wisconsinites do more than any other state in the country. Wisconsin has a new claim to fame. It's the number one state for frozen pizza eaters. That's according to a culinary trends website called The Takeout. The site claims Wisconsinites eat more pizza per capita than people in any other state in the country. We also produce several popular brands, including DiGiorno, Tombstone, and Jack's. The Associated Press reports the typical Midwesterner may eat frozen pizza up to 22 times a year. 22 times a year? 
That's a lot of frozen pizza. I'm, no? I'm helping with that. Oh, are you? I love can't, it. can't remember you. the last time I had one. <laughs> All right, we're talking about sports right now. Steven is here tonight. The playoff picture is set. Well, we know the matchups in the East. Now we're just waiting on the schedule coming up. The high praise for Giannis from the Celtics head coach and more home runs at Bush Stadium. The Brewers suffer their first series loss against the division opponent. The highlights ahead.